Hello again, it's Tim Spector here from the Zoe COVID study, giving you this week's update. And the bottom line is that with cases around 2,400, things haven't really changed for the last couple of weeks. So pretty flat, which for those worrying about an explosion of the Indian variant across the country, uh, that should be reassuring. But there's lots of detail below that headline that uh, we want to have a, a close look at. So uh, there's no doubt that the, the variant itself is taking over from the Kent variant and uh, is causing worry. But this seems to be just quite localized at the moment in terms of the country. And we are picking up hotspots on the app thanks to your logging. And new hotspots that we've picked up uh, in the last few days are Leicester, Bury, and Bradford. And we're still seeing ones that we saw uh, last week, Aberdeen, Kirklees, Bedford, and Bolton. And the good news is that this, uh, or the not so good news for those areas, the other areas it's not clearly spreading more widely. And that should be reassuring. Now, the government are advising that you shouldn't be meeting indoors in those places. Uh, but how much is that increased risk? And should people from uh, places say such as London or the average of the UK be uh, going to visit those places? How much extra risk are they going to actually get? So let's look at some of the data. So currently, and we're talking about rates of symptomatic COVID now, and there might be a fair bit of more asymptomatic COVID out there, but in terms of what uh, actual uh, disease out there, we're in seeing in London 33 people per 100,000 affected, and nationally it's about 63 per 100,000. And that compares if you go to Leicester of 179 per 100,000, 293 for Bedford, 156 for Kirklees, according to our data. But we are seeing some higher rates than that in other places, like uh, in Aberdeen, in the city of Aberdeen, where it's uh, 672 and uh, quite high in Leeds too at 319. So it's quite possible these might be uh, on future targets. Um, so the key here is we need to stay very vigilant and keep reporting so we can continue to, to monitor these hotspots and identify any changes. Now what I want us to discuss now is how effective are the current vaccines against these new strains of COVID. Because there was a study out at the weekend which um, suggested that the uh, new so-called uh, India variant, which derived, uh, came, was first discovered in India, but may have come from somewhere else, uh, might uh, be having a slight breakthrough effect on some of these vaccines. So uh, what they showed was that this effect might be true for people who've only had one dose, but uh, probably not true for two doses. So let's look at that data in a bit more detail because they uh, had 58,000 unvaccinated people and 32,000 with one dose and 8,000 with two doses. So it's reasonable numbers, uh, but it's it's not huge. And so there are wide confidence limits around that. But I think it, it, it's showing that we have to uh, act on the side of caution and, and suggest that there might be a slight um, increased risk if you've only had that one uh, vaccine shot co uh, with the new variant compared to the Kent variant until we get better data. Now, uh, if we look at our data and look at the, the positivity um, rates in the vaccinated and the unvaccinated people, uh, we found that the vaccinated rates of infection are really staying steady, uh, especially in those who've had two doses. 
and we've seen most of the cases are in unvaccinated people uh, and so what this tells us is that the vaccine really is protecting this isn't a, a problem of a failure with a vaccine to work uh, but you do need to get your um, your shots in time and make sure you don't forget to get the second one that does seem to be crucial in providing the, the full protection. Uh, so do book for that now. Now, uh, as I mentioned last week, um, we've got a, a, a paper that's uh, now online in preprint uh, on the symptoms you get after, if you get COVID after your vaccine, which I think is important to know about. And this great work was led by my colleagues, uh, Dr. Claire Steves and Professor Seb Orsolin and a large team. And uh, what we found was that the vaccines drastically reduce those typical COVID symptoms uh, if you do get the, the, the virus. So it's reducing the chance of getting the virus. And then if you do get it, uh, the symptoms are definitely much less. Uh, and we also found that those who are most at risk of contracting the virus and developing the symptoms were those or who already had some existing illness or frailty. So what we call comorbidities. Uh, and frailty, you know, is associated with either disease or being uh, more frail and elderly. Uh, it was also associated with living in more deprived areas, which uh, is, is interesting and many reasons potentially for that. Uh, and it, it, as it was also associated with either having a, uh, a higher BMI or a very low BMI, uh, which is a measure of uh, obesity, it suggests that also diet uh, plays a role here, as we're finding with, uh, in unvaccinated people. So generally, the good news is that if you've got a healthy lifestyle, um, you are really low risk. Uh, if you've been vaccinated of having any problems. And again, this shows how important our general health is to our immune system. And uh, this uh, have to be borne in mind as we go forward because we're not out of this anytime soon. So making sure you're, you're getting exercise, sleep and a good diet is really important. Now, not all people are the same. These are just the general risk factors. And of course, there are exceptions. Now, but now we've identified people at risk, this demonstrates why we do need perhaps more of a targeted risk policy uh, and making sure that maybe some of these people on that high risk either get their second vaccine earlier or they're prioritized for the booster uh, vaccinations that are, are gonna start uh, coming in before the end of the year uh, for those particularly elderly or, or frail individuals. Um, and my advice is that to stay vigilant, especially if you've had other health problems. Now, we mentioned before how the disease is changing. And not only are we now seeing people with milder symptoms, but the latest analysis we've done and is in that paper is showing that is actually a new symptom, which we weren't seeing in people who were unvaccinated. And this is particularly being seen in people who've had a, the double vaccination, so fully vaccinated, and that is sneezing. And this is interesting because we didn't show that uh, associated uh, last, last winter when some people thought it was associated. Uh, but now uh, we've changed, the data's changed, and so sneezing is now uh, definitely one of the symptoms that you may well have COVID uh, even if you had a vaccine, you probably will have a very minor form of it, but it's really important to realize that. And we think this is probably a reaction of the uh, nasal mucosa plus uh, your immune system reacting somewhat differently because it's been primed by the vaccine. Uh, and it also could be a subtle change in the virus itself that uh, might be working slightly differently uh, in our bodies as they do change over time and modify uh, and generally become milder, but better able to transmit. And so I think that's really important to realize that if you are sneezing, uh, you know, do go and get a, a test 
uh, and be careful about passing it on to to other people. Um, really important to pick that up. Now, um, our paper also found that um, if you had a vaccination, you reduce your uh, chance of getting long COVID by quite a lot, basically because you won't get the symptoms of the infection and that's reduced about 20 fold when you've had the two vaccinations. And we also found that if you do get infected, it's you're about 28% uh, reduction in getting long COVID even then. So actually uh, this is a big reduction in your risk. So the particular reason for younger people who may not worry about going to hospital, but do worry about long COVID, it's really showing that um, vaccinations are, are really helpful in that regard. Now, about long COVID, we are launching a survey by the end of the week, collecting information on long COVID and how symptoms evolve and change over time that we weren't able to get earlier, uh, basically because we, we couldn't cover all the bases in, uh, at the time. And we, it's open to everyone. We want to particularly hear from people who um, might have had COVID for any length of time, whether it was diagnosed by PCR test or not. We want to pick up those people that just think they had it, but maybe had it too early to get a test. Uh, and so we can include you and your results, which we weren't always able to do last year. And it doesn't matter if you don't have symptoms anymore. Uh, this is really important and we'll be uh, launching a whole series of other things, including getting antibody testing, etc. So uh, that's it for me. Um, I think if you're in one of those hot spots at the moment, don't worry too much. These are still levels that we've seen much higher of early in the pandemic. Uh, it should quieten down um, and uh, certainly don't, don't panic. Our general levels are still very low compared to other countries. We are doing well, we're getting there and rates haven't changed over the last couple of weeks. Thanks for logging daily. Your contributions are invaluable and absolutely crucial in helping us continue our research and giving you data like this. Please remember to like and subscribe uh, this video. Hit the notification bell if you want to be told as soon as these videos go live. And thanks for your help. Stay safe and keep logging.